Okay, so what I'm going to do is show one calculation, benzene, toluene, xylene. Uh, I'm going to show this using Raoult's law just to make it uh, make life simple. But of course, you can do it for the other three using um, NRTL model or some thermodynamic model like Unifac uh, if you want. So here is uh, here is the here is the spreadsheet. So uh, let's let's talk about this. So for example, suppose I start with zeta equal to zero. That means initially, suppose we start with this 0 0.3, 0 0.3, and 0 0.4. These are the compositions: benzene 0 0.3 toluene 0.3 and xylene of course is 1 minus toluene so if you look at this cell it is just 1 minus benzene minus uh, toluene the mole fraction now we guess this temperature this is our guess value we do uh, we calculate the vapor pressure of benzene using Antoine equation we calculate vapor pressure of toluene using Antoine equation vapor pressure of xylene using Antoine equation and then let me just take this little bit to the right uh, so then we calculate uh, the error in pressure so if you look at this formula, the vapor pressure multiplied by mole fraction of benzene, vapor pressure multiplied by mole fraction of toluene, vapor pressure multiplied by mole fraction of xylene, uh, minus, of course, we want it to be one atmosphere, so 760 mmHg, I, these vapor pressures are in mmHg, and we find the error, so this is the error, percentage error. Now, we do goal seek, so for that, we use a function, data, um, and then there is a uh, function called as what if analysis, goal seek, so we say this value, I wanted to make it zero by changing the cell, this temperature, and of course it will calculate. It's already calculated. Then correspondingly, we calculate the y mole fraction of benzene in the vapor, toluene in the vapor, and xylene in the vapor. Now we take a step in zeta. So d zeta is suppose 0 0.1. Now we take a step in zeta, make zeta equal to 0 0.1. Now we calculate the new value of benzene toluene using the previous values of benzene toluene and x minus y recall our, our rally equation it is dx by d zeta is equal to x minus y d zeta and the y benzene and y toluene so using these two values d zeta and these two values we calculate the new values of benzene and new values of toluene and of course new value of xylene would be 1 minus mole fraction in benzene and mole fraction of uh, toluene. Like this, we go on marching in zeta, zeta equal to 0 0.1, 0 0.2, 0 0.3, 0 0.4, 0 0.5 by taking steps of d zeta, 0 0.1, 0 0.1, 0 0.1, 0 0.1, and then we can calculate. Now, advantage of doing this is that I can take a step of d zeta minus 0 0.1 as well, and then I can redo the whole calculation and this is how our residue curves will change. So this is our starting point. Let me go back to this point one first of all and do these calculations and this is how the residue curve is changing. What we have done is we have plotted it on a ternary diagram. X axis is the mole fraction of benzene. Y axis is the mole fraction of toluene. So this vertex is mole fraction. This is pure benzene. This vertex is pure toluene and this vertex is pure xylene. So now this is how the residue compositions are changing so this is the residue curve map starting with 0 0.3 0 0.3 0 0.3 uh, 0 0.3 0 0.3 and 0 0.4 if you want to go in the other direction take just zeta equal to minus 0 0.1 and you go in the other direction from 0 0.3 0 0.3 0 0.3 you go it is as if you have started here and ended up at 0 0.3 0 0.3 0 0.4 that's what is the meaning of that stepping minus but let's just take a step of uh, 0.1 positive step only. Now we can change it for a different value of the initial composition. So suppose benzene mole fraction is 0.9, toluene mole fraction is 0 0.09 and xylene mole fraction is 0 0.01. So we are starting somewhere here. Now if we do these calculations, we will find that the residue curve is changing like this. I can take a slightly bigger value of delta zeta and I do these calculations once again. Then this is how the residue curve composition is changing. Residue curve is changing so this is called as a residue curve map now we can start with different values we can say let's say we start with 0 0.95 we take with 0 0.099 and oh, sorry 0 0.099 and correspond well 0 .0, 0 0.094 let's say oops 0 .0, 0 0.049 i should say 
so then the xylene mole fraction is 0 0.001 now if you do the residue curve calculations you will see how the residue curve is changing it is going towards the toluene and then coming down towards the xylene i can take a bigger step of zeta now just to make just to show you the uh, calculations so this is how i want you to do uh, the uh, residue curve map calculations for different systems using now not just the Raoult's law but now using NRTL model or some thermodynamic model because now the systems are going to be non-ideal they are going to show azeotropes and so on okay now coming back to uh, our uh, other three systems I want you to use NRTL model for doing calculations for methanol ethanol propanol here there is no azeotrope but when you go to acetone methanol water there will be an azeotrope acetone methanol form an azeotrope they form a minimum boiling azeotrope acetone chloroform form a maximum boiling azeotrope so i want you to actually draw, uh, draw these uh, uh, residue curve maps for different starting compositions yourself and uh, so that you can see what is it uh, how do these residue curve maps look like and then we can uh, we can go forward as to actually using them okay so these are just the curves for acetone methanol i'm just showing two sample curves we are uh, 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 this is an NRTL calculation. I'm just showing you uh, how it is going to look like. You can do it for yourself. So, x axis is the mole fraction of acetone. So, this vertex corresponds to pure acetone. Y axis is mole fraction of methanol. So, this corresponds to pure methanol. And the origin, of course, now corresponds to zero acetone, zero methanol. That means pure water. So, suppose I start with this composition. So, suppose I start with this composition, maybe uh, something like point. 7 acetone maybe 0 0.28 um, uh, methanol, uh, methanol the residue curves will residue compositions will go along this curve they will go along this direction so you generate yourself so suppose I start with somewhere here maybe the other side of the azeotrope maybe the mole fraction as 0.82 of acetone maybe 0.15 of methanol and the rest as water the residue curves residue compositions will change like these these are actual calculations using nrtl model you do it for yourself then only you will see binary of course acetone water there is no azeotrope so the residue compositions are just like this binary of methanol and water there is no azeotrope so the residue compositions are just going to go from methanol to water methanol acetone there is a minimum boiling azeotrope so this is the minimum boiling azeotrope and of course the residue curves because the minimum boiling azeotrope means more volatile the residue curve is going to go towards the methanol vertex and the residue curve is going to go towards the acetone vertex on the other side of the azeotrope right you see that the that the residue curve maps or residue curve lines they are following how the behavior is of the axis right so if i had a composition here the residue curve would have if I had a composition here, the residue curve would have gone something like this. If I had a composition something like this, the residue curve would have gone like this. Do you realize? If I had a composition somewhere here, the residue curve would have gone like this. If I had a composition here, the residue curve would have gone like this. They are going to go like the direction of these, uh, of these sides of the triangle. And of course, the middle behavior is what we need to uh, what we need to actually calculate. Uh, let me just show you uh, one more case. So this is the actual diagram generated for many many uh, starting points. They are all so. What we are going to do is we are going to take compositions, different compositions around this azeotropic point, and then these are the different residue curve maps we would show. Uh, 
This is how you would get if you actually do. So you see this it goes towards the acetone and then towards the water because the, the it is going to follow like the side. It is going to follow around the side. Uh, this is a slightly different. This is called as a distillation curve map. So methanol, ethanol and propanol, this system, the residue curve would be exactly opposite. The residue curve would be like this. Distillation curve means how the vapor composition would change. If I enrich and enrich and enrich the vapor more and more and more and more. So I take the um, take the vapor, condense, generate vapor, take the condense, generate vapor. That's how the uh, the black arrows will, that's how the uh, distillation curve would look like. The residue curve is what is remaining in the still and it is going to be exactly opposite to the distillation curve. So the residue curve will look like. So if I start with this as a composition, my composition will change along this curve. If I start with this as a composition, my composition will go along this curve. So that is called as a uh, residue curve. This is how residue curve is going to look like for methanol, ethanol, propanol system. You can generate it yourself using NRTS. Generate it yourself. Then only, uh, then only believe. Then only go forward. I'm going to show you for one more uh, case: uh, acetone chloroform benzene. Now let's do this very, very care uh, carefully and uh, slowly. So this is our benzene. This vertex is benzene this vertex is acetone and this vertex is chloroform. Now chloroform and acetone they form a maximum boiling azeotrope that is here. It's a maximum boiling azeotrope boiling point is 64.4 whereas the chloroform boiling point is lower acetone boiling point is lower so you know it's a maximum boiling azeotrope. So if you look at the binary mixture of chloroform and acetone that would be along this side the residue curves would be towards the azeotrope. Recall if you want go back into the lecture and find out for yourself how the binaries would look like for a maximum boiling azeotrope. Now if you look at the chloroform benzene this side of the triangle benzene is less volatile there is no azeotrope, so all the residue curves would point from the chloroform to the benzene vertex. Same way, benzene acetone, there is no azeotrope, benzene is less volatile, acetone is more volatile. So the residue curves, if you look at the bottom side of the triangle, the binary mixture of acetone and benzene, the residue curves would all point towards benzene. Okay, now if you start with some composition in the somewhere inside the ternary diagram, let's say we start our, uh, let's say we, we start from here, say acetone something like 0 0.95, right? Acetone something like 0 0.95, then chloroform may 0 0.08, and uh, and and rest um, uh, and rest as uh, yeah, benzene. Now the residue composition is going to go like this. You can generate it yourself. It is going to get more and more enriched into chloroform because acetone is more volatile. But as it approaches this this point, it cannot go across because the residue curve is pointing on the right side. It is going to point away. So if, if okay, let's just start with something very very close to the uh, to the side of the triangle. So suppose I start with here. Now the residue curve is going to follow this side of the triangle very much. It is going to approach the azeotrope point. Okay. But it's not going to go here because you see now the residue curves are pointing towards the azeotrope. So this is not possible. Right. So the residue compositions will come to this side but then now it is going to go to whatever is even less volatile as compared to azeotrope. What is less volatile as compared to azeotrope is the benzene. So the residue curve will go towards the benzene. 
same way here if I start here goes towards but it is not going to go towards it is not going to go towards chloroform because now the residue curves are pointing away from chloroform so this is not possible okay so we are going to go down towards benzene like this same way in the other direction suppose I start somewhere near chloroform suppose I start somewhere here very close to the, uh, the, the side I will go along this side towards the azeotrope but now I can't go across the azeotrope because the residue curves are all pointing towards the azeotrope so this is not possible so when it is reaching this near azeotrope it will go towards whatever is even less volatile what is less volatile than azeotrope is benzene so you see all the residue curves on one side of the azeotrope will go like this on the other side of the azeotrope they would go towards the azeotrope but then they will turn around go towards benzene you see that we can't we are not going to cross this azeotrope because now the temperature is already 64 it can't go to 61 more volatile than this it has to go to even less volatile the residue curve has to go to even less volatile that's 80 so what we are going to end up with is something we call as a distillation boundary so you are not going to be able to cross this distillation boundary so this distillation boundary for this particular case is like this red line if you are on one side of this distillation boundary if you are on the left side of this distillation bound or, or if you are in the below of this distillation boundary your residues or residue composition are always going to be in this lower side of the distillation boundary if you are on the upper side of the distillation boundary your residues residue compositions are always going to be on the upper side of this distillation boundary okay. so this is how the residue curves are going to look like for chloroform benzene and acetone but generate these for yourself using nrtl only then you go forward okay now another case residue curve map for acetone chloroform methanol so this is let's let's look at this acetone this vertex is acetone pure acetone this vertex is methanol and this vertex is chloroform now acetone and chloroform they form a maximum boiling azeotrope so this is a maximum boiling azeotrope so the residue curves on the binary of chloroform and acetone are going to be pointing towards the azeotrope binary methanol acetone methanol acetone there is a minimum boiling azeotrope here so the residue curves are on the binary of acetone and methanol the residue curves are going to point away from the minimum boiling azeotrope methanol chloroform methanol chloroform there is a minimum boiling azeotrope here so the residue curves along the binary of methanol and chloroform they are going to form they are going to go away from the minimum boiling azeotrope this there is a ternary azeotrope what we call as a ternary azeotrope ternary azeotrope means just like a binary compositions of the vapor phase and the liquid phase do not change or they are the same so whatever is the composition if the ternary azeotrope this is the composition of chloroform methanol acetone in the liquid phase the vapor phase would have exactly the same composition of acetone methanol chloroform so that's called as a ternary azeotrope now ternary azeotrope we are not going to call by a minimum boiling or a maximum boiling because you see this temperature 57.6 is higher than the acetone but lower than methanol and chloroform so we don't call it as a minimum or a maximum boiling azeotrope we just call it as a ternary azeotrope now if you see the distillation curves or, or residue curves if we start with let's say some point here 
then we are going to go look at the boundary we are going to go towards the methanol but if you are a slightly higher composition we will go towards this azeotrope but then turn towards the methanol same way if we start with this minimum boiling azeotrope of acetone and methanol we will go towards this azeotrope ternary azeotrope but it will turn towards because the temperature now is going towards higher and higher uh, temperatures lesser and lesser volatile it will not cross because you have already reached 57.6 you are not going to go towards 53.9 if you are on the other side it will go towards this ternary azeotrope but then go towards this maximum boiling azeotrope if you are starting somewhere here you will go towards this maximum boiling azeotrope if you are starting here you will go towards this chloroform then towards this maximum boiling azeotrope okay if you are on this side you will start go towards this ternary azeotrope but turn and go towards this uh, towards this uh, maximum boiling azeotrope because that is the least volatile um, yeah, com least volatile composition if you like in this uh, in this ternary diagram so we are going to get actually four regions one distillation region one more distillation region one more distillation region one more distillation region so four distillation regions and four distillation boundaries so one boundary here one boundary here one boundary here one boundary here so two three points to note is that the distillation boundaries and residue curves are not straight lines they are curves because x and y are related by some thermodynamic model it's not a linear model these are not straight lines in reality okay and our second point to note is near the work near the sides of the triangle the residue curves show behavior similar to the sides of the triangle so for example here this curve you see it is showing behavior like the sides of the triangle here it is showing like the side of this triangle here it is showing like the side of this triangle and to generate these residue curve maps we would start with points which are around the azeotropes or around the vertices and take different points and see how they would change so that's going to come in the next class how do you generate these residue curve maps at least qualitatively so what we have looked at in this lecture we have seen what is a residue curve map we have seen how do you generate from thermodynamic point of view a rigorous method in the next class what we will do is before we start using we will see so this becomes our point number four now point number three we will generate approximate residue curve maps without doing rigorous calculations that's what we are going to see next okay so that's going to come in the next class